I'm thrilled to present today's message on how to overcome self-imposed barriers. Do you often find yourself holding back from reaching your full potential? Well, you're not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in our own thoughts and limitations, hindering our growth and success. But fear not, my friends, because in this video, I'll share with you five powerful ways to overcome these obstacles and get out of your own way. These are strategies I've personally used and have helped countless individuals achieve their goals and dreams. So, if you're ready to break free from your own limitations and start living your best life, then buckle up and get ready to be inspired. Remember, you're capable of achieving greatness, and by listening to this message, you can turn things around and start creating the life you truly deserve. Let's dive in and discover the five ways to get out of your own way, starting with number five, embrace failure and learn from it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Failure is not something we want to embrace, let alone learn from. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of success. In fact, it's one of the most crucial elements in achieving success. We live in a society that glorifies success and demonizes failure. We're constantly bombarded with images of successful people and their achievements. But behind every success story, there are countless failures. Thomas Edison, one of the greatest inventors of all time, failed thousands of times before creating the light bulb. Walt Disney was fired from his first job because he lacked creativity. J.K. Rowling, the author of the famous Harry Potter series, was rejected by 12 publishers before finally getting her book published. These are just a few examples of how failure is an essential part of the journey towards success. So, why do we fear failure? Why do we let it hold us back from reaching our full potential? The answer is simple, because we've been conditioned to believe that failure is a bad thing. We're taught to avoid failure at all costs, to play it safe, and to stick to what we know. But let me tell you, my friends, playing it safe will not get you very far in life. If you want to achieve greatness, you must be willing to take risks and embrace failure. Now, I'm not saying that you should actively seek failure, but when it does happen, don't let it discourage you. Instead, use it as a learning opportunity. Failure is the best teacher. It shows us where we went wrong and gives us a chance to improve. As the saying goes, fall down seven times, stand up eight. Every time you fail, get back up and try again, armed with the knowledge and experience gained from your previous failure. Failure is not the end, it's just a stepping stone towards success. It's a necessary part of the journey, and without it, we would never learn, grow, or evolve. Think about it. If you never failed, how would you know what works and what doesn't? How would you improve and become better? Failure is what separates the average from the extraordinary. Those who are willing to embrace failure and learn from it are the ones who will ultimately achieve success. But let me warn you, failure is not easy. It can be painful, humiliating, and demotivating. It takes a strong mindset and a positive attitude to turn failure into a learning experience. But trust me, my friends, it's worth it. The lessons you learn from failure will stay with you for a lifetime and will help you in all aspects of your life. So, how do we embrace failure and learn from it? The first step is to change our mindset. Instead of seeing failure as a negative thing, see it as an opportunity to improve. Remind yourself that every successful person has failed multiple times before achieving their goals. Second, don't be afraid to take risks. If you're always playing it safe, you'll never know what you're truly capable of. And finally, when you do fail, take the time to reflect on what went wrong and how you can do better next time. Use failure as a tool to improve and grow. Which leads us to number four. Take responsibility for your actions. What do I mean by this? It means that we must stop making excuses, pointing fingers, and blaming others for our circumstances. We must take ownership of our actions and the results they bring. This is not an easy task, but it's a necessary one if we want to achieve success and live a fulfilling life. It's easy to play the victim and shift the blame onto others, but in the long run, it only hinders our growth and potential. When we take responsibility for our actions, we're taking control of our lives. We're no longer at the mercy of external factors. We become the masters of our own destiny. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but what if it really is someone else's fault? What if they did something that directly affected me? My response to that is this. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. What matters is how you respond to the situation. You can either choose to dwell on the blame and let it consume you, or you can take responsibility and find a solution. Taking responsibility also means being accountable for our mistakes. We're all human, and we're bound to make mistakes. But what separates successful individuals from the rest is their ability to take ownership of those mistakes and learn from them. It takes courage and humility to admit when we're wrong, but it's a crucial step in our personal growth. Furthermore, taking responsibility for our actions also means taking control of our thoughts and emotions. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it. We must learn to be proactive rather than reactive. Instead of letting our emotions dictate our actions, we must take a step back, assess the situation, and respond in a way that aligns with our goals and values. Now, I must warn you, taking responsibility for our actions is not a one-time thing. It's a continuous process. We must constantly evaluate ourselves and hold ourselves accountable. It's not enough to say, I take responsibility. We must also follow through with our actions. We must be consistent and persistent in our efforts to improve ourselves and our circumstances. Which leads us to number three. Surround yourself with positive and supportive people. You may be wondering, why is this so important? Why do I need to surround myself with positive and supportive people? Well, the answer is simple. Because the people we surround ourselves with have a tremendous impact on our lives. They can either lift us up or bring us down, inspire us or demotivate us, support us or hold us back. And it's up to us to choose who we allow into our lives and who we keep at a distance. Negative people have a way of spreading their negativity like a virus. They can bring you down, make you doubt yourself, and hold you back from achieving your dreams. That's why it's crucial to surround yourself with positive people who will lift you up, support you, and believe in you. Now, surrounding yourself with positive people doesn't mean surrounding yourself with a bunch of yes men and yes women. It doesn't mean surrounding yourself with people who will tell you what you want to hear. It means surrounding yourself with people who will tell you what you need to hear. People who will challenge you, push you out of your comfort zone, and help you grow. People who will hold you accountable and keep you on track. People who genuinely care about your success and will do everything in their power to see you succeed. So, how do you surround yourself with such people? The first step is to evaluate your current circle of influence. Take a look at the people you spend the most time with. Are they positive and supportive? Do they inspire you to be better? Do they believe in your dreams and goals? If the answer is no, then it's time to make some changes. It's time to distance yourself from those who bring you down and start seeking out positive and supportive individuals. The second step is to be intentional about who you let into your life. Don't just accept anyone into your circle of influence. Be selective. Surround yourself with people who have similar values, goals, and ambitions. Seek out mentors and coaches who can guide you and help you grow. Join groups and communities of like-minded individuals who will support and encourage you. Remember, it's not about the quantity of people in your life. It's about the quality. The third and final step is to be a positive and supportive person yourself. As the saying goes, you attract what you put out into the world. If you want to surround yourself with positive and supportive people, then you must also be positive and supportive. Be the kind of person you want to have in your life. Lift others up, support them, and believe in them. By being a positive and supportive person, you will naturally attract the same kind of people into your life. Which leads us to number two. Get out of your own way by setting realistic goals. One of the biggest obstacles we face in achieving our dreams and reaching our full potential is ourselves. We often get in our own way with self-doubt, fear, and limiting beliefs. But the good news is we have the power to overcome these obstacles and achieve greatness, and it all starts with setting realistic goals. Now, let me be clear. Setting goals is not about wishful thinking or daydreaming. It's about creating a roadmap for your life and taking action towards your desired destination. It's about being intentional and purposeful in your actions. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So, how do we set realistic goals? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Imagine yourself living your dream life. What does it look like? How does it feel? What are you doing? Who are you with? 
The more specific you can be, the better. This vision will serve as your North Star, guiding you towards your goals. Next, break down your vision into smaller, achievable goals. These are the stepping stones that will lead you to your ultimate destination. It's important to make these goals realistic and attainable. Setting goals that are too big or unrealistic can lead to frustration and disappointment. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. Once you have your goals in place, it's time to take action. This is where the magic happens. You must be willing to put in the work and make sacrifices to achieve your goals. Success is not convenient. It requires discipline, determination, and perseverance. There will be times when you will face challenges and setbacks, but it's important to stay focused on your goals and keep moving forward. Another crucial aspect of setting realistic goals is accountability. It's easy to make excuses and give up when we are the only ones holding ourselves accountable. That's why it's important to have an accountability partner or join a mastermind group. These individuals will hold you accountable and push you to be your best self. Now, I want to address something that often holds people back from setting realistic goals, fear of failure. We've all experienced failure at some point in our lives, and it can be a painful and humbling experience. But I'm here to tell you that failure is not the end, it's an opportunity to learn and grow. In fact, I would argue that failure is a necessary part of success. It teaches us resilience, determination, and the importance of setting realistic goals. Lastly, I want to leave you with a powerful tool that will help you in setting and achieving your goals, the power of visualization. Visualization is the process of creating a mental image of yourself achieving your goals. It's a powerful technique used by many successful individuals, including athletes and entrepreneurs. By visualizing your success, you are programming your mind for success. It helps you stay motivated and focused on your goals. Which leads us to number one. Get out of your own way by identifying and challenging negative self-talk. Now, you may be wondering, what exactly is negative self-talk? It's that little voice inside your head that constantly tells you that you're not good enough, that you'll never succeed, that you're not worthy of happiness and success. It's the voice that plants seeds of doubt and fear in your mind, and if you allow it to, it can hold you back from achieving your dreams. We all have this voice, and it's a natural part of being human. However, the difference between successful people and those who struggle is that successful people know how to identify and challenge their negative self-talk. They understand that this voice is not the truth. It's simply a reflection of their fears and insecurities. So, how do we identify negative self-talk? The first step is to become aware of it. Pay attention to your thoughts and the words you use when talking to yourself. Are they positive and empowering, or negative and limiting? If you find yourself constantly doubting your abilities and putting yourself down, then you're engaging in negative self-talk. The next step is to challenge this negative self-talk. Ask yourself, is this thought true? Is there any evidence to support it? More often than not, you'll realize that these thoughts are baseless and have no real evidence to support them. They're simply a product of your fears and insecurities. Once you've identified and challenged your negative self-talk, it's time to replace it with positive self-talk. This is where affirmations come into play. Affirmations are positive statements that you repeat to yourself to counteract negative thoughts. For example, if your negative self-talk tells you that you're not smart enough to achieve your goals, you can counteract it by saying, I am intelligent and capable of achieving anything I set my mind to. But affirmations alone are not enough. You must also take action towards your goals. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. You can tell yourself all the positive things in the world, but if you don't take action, nothing will change. So, make a plan, set goals, and take consistent action towards achieving them. Another way to challenge negative self-talk is to surround yourself with positive and supportive people. The people you spend the most time with have a significant impact on your thoughts and beliefs, that choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, support you, and encourage you to be your best self. In addition to that, it's crucial to practice self-care and self-love. Take care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Treat yourself with kindness and compassion. Remember, you are your own best friend, and you should always be there to lift yourself up, not tear yourself down. 
Now, I want to address a common misconception about negative self-talk. Some people believe that it's necessary to be hard on themselves to push themselves to achieve more. But let me tell you, that's not the case. Negative self-talk does not motivate you, it only holds you back. It's like trying to drive a car with a handbrake on. You may move forward, but at a much slower pace and with a lot more effort. So, my friends, I urge you to be kind to yourself. Treat yourself with the same love and compassion that you would show to your loved ones. Remember, you are worthy, you are capable, and you deserve all the happiness and success in the world. Remember, you have the power to shape your thoughts and create your reality. So, choose to believe in yourself, take action, and never let negative self-talk hold you back from reaching your full potential. Thank you. In today's message, we're going to talk about something that I know many of you are struggling with. Feeling stuck and unable to make progress towards your goals. It's a common struggle, and I want you to know that you are not alone. I've been there too, and I understand the frustration and disappointment that comes with it. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you have taken the first step towards turning things around. You have shown the willingness to learn and grow, and that is the key to getting unstuck and making progress towards your goals. So congratulations on taking this step, my friends. Now, let's dive into the five ways that will help you break through the barriers and achieve the success you desire. Are you ready? Let's begin. Starting with number five, my friends, if you can master this fifth way, you will be well on your way to achieving all of your dreams and aspirations. So what is this fifth way, you may ask? It is quite simple yet incredibly powerful. The fifth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to stay committed and consistent. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Jim, that's easier said than done. How can I possibly stay committed and consistent when life throws me curveballs and obstacles? And to that, I say this. It all starts with your mindset. You see, my friends, commitment and consistency are not just actions. They are a state of mind. It is a mindset that you must cultivate and nurture in order to achieve success. The first step in developing this mindset is to understand the power of your thoughts. Your thoughts are the driving force behind your actions. If you think negatively, you will act negatively. But if you think positively, you will act positively. So, my friends, I urge you to start monitoring your thoughts. Pay attention to the words you speak to yourself and the beliefs you hold about yourself. Are they positive or negative? Are they helping or hindering your progress? Remember, your thoughts have the power to shape your reality. So make sure you are feeding your mind with positive thoughts and beliefs that will keep you committed and consistent on your journey towards success. But it's not just about positive thinking. It's also about having a clear and specific vision for your goals. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. This will give you a sense of purpose and drive, which will keep you committed and consistent in the face of challenges and setbacks. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So make sure you have a clear destination in mind and stay focused on it. Now, I want to address something that often holds people back from staying committed and consistent, and that is the fear of failure. Many of us have a fear of failing, of not being good enough, of not living up to our own expectations. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared. In fact, it is an essential part of the journey towards success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. So I urge you to embrace failure, embrace it as a necessary stepping stone towards your goals. And when you do fail, which you inevitably will, don't let it discourage you. Instead, use it as a learning opportunity and keep moving forward. Remember, it is not about how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and keep going. Another key aspect of staying committed and consistent is to have a plan in place. You must have a roadmap that will guide you towards your goals. This plan should include specific actions and milestones that you will take to make progress towards your goals. And most importantly, it should be flexible. Life is unpredictable, and your plan may need to be adjusted along the way. But as long as you have a plan, you will have a clear direction and a sense of purpose. But having a plan is not enough. You must also take action. You must be willing to put in the work and make sacrifices to achieve your goals. 
As the saying goes, the road to success is always under construction. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. So, my friends, I urge you to take action every single day towards your goals, even if it's just a small step. It will keep you moving forward and bring you closer to your dreams. And finally, I want to touch on the importance of accountability. It is crucial to have someone or something that holds you accountable for your actions. This could be a mentor, a coach, a friend, or even a journal. When you have someone or something to answer to, you are more likely to stay committed and consistent. And remember, it's not just about being accountable to others, but also to yourself. Hold yourself accountable for your actions, and you will see how much progress you can make. Now, to number four. The fourth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to learn from setbacks and failures. Now, I know what you're thinking. Failures, setbacks. That doesn't sound very motivating, does it? But let me tell you, my friends, it is in those moments of failure and setback that we truly learn and grow. It is in those moments that we are forced to reevaluate our actions and make necessary changes in order to move forward. You see, setbacks and failures are not signs of weakness or defeat. They are simply opportunities for growth and improvement. As the great Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that, my friends, is the key to learning from setbacks and failures, having the courage to continue. So how do we learn from setbacks and failures? How do we turn those moments of disappointment into opportunities for growth? Well, the first step is to change our mindset. Instead of viewing setbacks and failures as something to be ashamed of, we must view them as valuable learning experiences. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced setbacks and failures. But what sets them apart is their ability to learn from those experiences and use them to their advantage. They don't let failures define them, but rather they use them as stepping stones towards success. The second step is to take responsibility. It's easy to blame external factors for our failures, the economy, our boss, our circumstances. But the truth is, we are ultimately responsible for our own success or failure. And when we take responsibility, we take back control of our lives and our future. The third step is to reflect and analyze. When we face a setback or failure, it's important to take a step back and reflect on what went wrong. What actions did we take that led to this outcome? What could we have done differently? By analyzing our mistakes, we can learn from them and make better choices in the future. The fourth step is to keep going. As I mentioned earlier, it takes courage to continue after a setback or failure. But that is exactly what we must do. We must pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep moving forward. As long as we keep going, we are making progress towards our goals. And the fifth and final step is to use setbacks and failures as motivation. Let them fuel your fire and drive you towards success. Use them as a reminder of where you started on this journey in the first place. And when you do achieve success, you can look back at those moments and be proud of how far you have come. Now, I know that learning from setbacks and failures is not easy. It takes resilience, determination, and a strong mindset. But let me tell you, my friends, it is worth it. Because when we learn from our failures, we become stronger, wiser, and more equipped to handle any challenges that come our way. Now, to number three. The third way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, Jim, that sounds like common sense. Of course, we should surround ourselves with positive and supportive people. And you're right, it is common sense. But as my mentor Earl Schaff used to say, common sense is not always common practice. So today, I want to remind you of the power of your environment and the people you choose to surround yourself with. You see, we are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. As the famous motivational speaker Les Brown once said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that for a moment. Who are the five people you spend the most time with? Are they positive and supportive individuals who uplift and inspire you? Or are they negative and toxic individuals who drain your energy and hold you back? Now, I understand that sometimes we can't choose our family or co-workers. But we can choose our friends and the activities we engage in outside of work. 
And that is where we must be intentional about surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people. Positive and supportive people have a contagious energy. They radiate positivity and their enthusiasm is infectious. Just being around them can lift your spirits and motivate you to take action towards your goals. They believe in you and their belief can be the fuel that propels you forward. On the other hand, negative and toxic people have a draining energy. They complain, criticize and bring others down with their pessimism. Being around them can leave you feeling depleted and demotivated. They may even try to discourage you from pursuing your goals, as they are often afraid to take risks themselves. And if you're not careful, their negativity can seep into your mind and hold you back from reaching your full potential. So the question is, how do we surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, it starts with being intentional about the relationships we cultivate. We must be selective about who we allow into our inner circle and the activities we engage in. First and foremost, we must be positive and supportive ourselves. As the saying goes, you attract what you are, not what you want. If we want to attract positive and supportive people, we must first embody those qualities ourselves. We must be the kind of person we want to surround ourselves with. Secondly, we must seek out like-minded individuals. Look for people who share similar values, goals and interests. These are the people who will understand and support your journey. They will also challenge and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Next, we must be willing to let go of toxic relationships. This can be a difficult and uncomfortable process, but it is necessary for our growth and well-being. As the saying goes, sometimes you have to let go of the old to make room for the new, and that applies to relationships as well. If someone is constantly bringing you down and hindering your progress, it may be time to distance yourself from them. Additionally, we must be open to meeting new people. Sometimes we can get stuck in our routines and only interact with the same group of people. But by stepping out of our comfort zone and meeting new people, we open ourselves up to new perspectives and opportunities. Attend networking events, join a club or organization, or even strike up a conversation with someone new at the gym. You never know who you might meet and how they may impact your life. And finally, we must be willing to be vulnerable and ask for help. It takes courage to admit that we need support, but it is essential for our growth. Don't be afraid to reach out to a mentor, coach, or friend for guidance and encouragement. Remember, we are not meant to do this journey alone. We all need support and guidance along the way. Now, to number two. I am here to tell you that the number two way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to take action and start small. You see, many of us have big dreams and aspirations, but we often get stuck in the planning phase. We spend hours, days, and weeks creating the perfect plan, but we fail to take action. We wait for the perfect moment, the perfect opportunity, the perfect circumstances. But let me tell you, my friends, there is no such thing as a perfect moment. The only moment we have is right now, and it is up to us to make the most of it. So what does it mean to take action and start small? It means to take that first step towards your goal, no matter how small it may seem. It means to stop waiting for the perfect moment and start creating your own perfect moment. It means to have the courage to step out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. It means to have faith in yourself and your abilities. You see, success is not about making big leaps. It is about taking small steps consistently. It is about building momentum and staying committed to your goals. And the best way to do that is to start small. Let me give you an example. If your goal is to lose 50 pounds, don't try to do it all at once. Start by making small changes in your diet and exercise routine. Maybe start by cutting out sugary drinks or going for a 15-minute walk every day. These small actions may seem insignificant, but they add up over time. And before you know it, you will have reached your goal. Another reason why it is important to start small is that it helps us build confidence. When we take small actions and see results, it gives us the confidence to take bigger actions. It is like building a muscle. You start with light weights and gradually increase as you get stronger. The same goes for our goals. We start with small actions and gradually increase as we gain momentum and confidence. But I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I fail? What if I take action and it doesn't work out? My friends, failure is a part of the journey to success. 
It is not something to be feared, but rather embraced. Because every failure brings with it a valuable lesson and an opportunity to grow. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So, my friends, do not let the fear of failure hold you back from taking action and starting small. Now, I know that taking action and starting small may seem simple, but let me tell you, it is not easy. It takes discipline, commitment, and perseverance. It means showing up every day, even when you don't feel like it. It means pushing through the obstacles and setbacks. But I can assure you, my friends, that the rewards are worth it. So how do we take action and start small? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Set specific and measurable goals for yourself, write them down, and review them every day. This will keep you focused and motivated. The next step is to create a plan of action. Break down your goals into smaller, manageable tasks. This will make it easier for you to take action and stay on track. And remember, it is okay to adjust your plan as you go along. The important thing is to keep moving forward. And finally, my friends, the most important step is to take action. Do not wait for the perfect moment. Create your own perfect moment. Take that first step, no matter how small it may seem, and then take another step, and another, and another. Before you know it, you will have made significant progress towards your goals. Now, to number one. And after years of research and personal experience, I can confidently say that the key to achieving your goals lies in one simple word, planning. You see, we all have dreams and desires. We all have goals that we want to achieve, whether it's to become financially independent, start a successful business, or improve our health and relationships. We all have something that we want to accomplish, but often, we find ourselves stuck, unable to move forward and make progress towards our goals. We get caught up in the daily grind, we get distracted by the latest trends and fads, and we lose sight of what truly matters. But I am here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to break free from the chains of mediocrity and create a life that is filled with purpose and meaning. And it all starts with a clear and specific plan. Now, I know that planning may not sound like the most exciting or glamorous thing, but let me tell you, it is the foundation of all success. Without a plan, you are like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But with a plan, you have a direction, a purpose, and a roadmap to guide you towards your destination. So how do you create a clear and specific plan? Let me share with you the steps that have worked for me and countless others who have achieved their goals and dreams. Step 1. Define your goal. The first step in creating a plan is to clearly define your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Be specific and write it down. Whether it's to lose 20 pounds, save $10,000, or start your own business, write it down and make it tangible. Step 2. Set a deadline. Next, set a deadline for when you want to achieve your goal. This will create a sense of urgency and motivate you to take action. Without a deadline, your goal will remain a distant dream, always just out of reach. Step 3. Break it down into smaller actionable steps. Now that you have a clear goal and a deadline, it's time to break it down into smaller actionable steps. This will make your goal more manageable and less overwhelming. For example, if your goal is to save $10,000, you can break it down into saving $1,000 each month for the next 10 months. Step 4. Create a timeline. Once you have your smaller steps, create a timeline for when you will complete each one. This will help you stay on track and ensure that you are making progress towards your goal. It's important to be realistic with your timeline, but also push yourself to stay accountable and motivated. Step 5. Identify potential obstacles and solutions. No plan is foolproof, and there will always be obstacles and challenges along the way. But the key is to identify them beforehand and come up with solutions to overcome them. This will prevent you from getting derailed and keep you focused on your goal. Step 6. Take action and review your progress. Now that you have a clear and specific plan, it's time to take action. Remember, a plan is only effective if you put it into action. And as you make progress towards your goal, be sure to review your plan regularly and make any necessary adjustments. My friends, this may seem like a simple and straightforward process, but I assure you, it is the most powerful tool you have in achieving your goals and getting unstuck. 
It's not about having the perfect plan. It's about taking action and making progress towards your dreams. As we move into our next topic of personal development, I urge you to take this number one way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals and apply it to all areas of your life, whether it's your career, relationships, health, or finances. A clear and specific plan will be your guiding light towards success. Before we go, I want to leave you with this quote from Benjamin Franklin. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So go forth and create your plan, and I have no doubt that you will achieve greatness and live a life of purpose and fulfillment. Thank you.